So we finally have our confirmation for the Apple event. Apple has dropped the event invitations as expected for September the 12th. And given that the press are invited to be on site for the event, uh, they do need to have a couple of weeks of heads up so they can arrange for travel accommodation so that they can come and have hands on and hold the phones and play with the things. So here's the invite. Let me know what clues you think are hidden in here down in the comments. So now that we know when we'll be seeing the event, what should we expect to see at the event? Obviously the iPhone 15 series. We'll come to the iPhone 15 Pro in a minute, but the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus are getting more changes than last year. Like not a lot, but more. We're expecting a mild redesign to the frame with slightly more rounded curved edges that should make the phone a little bit more comfortable in the hands of the 3% of people who don't put a case on it from Amazon within a day of buying it. Now the back of the base iPhones will also uh, reportedly get the frosted glass that has until now been exclusive to the Pro phones and in the biggest change the notch will finally be gone replaced by Dynamic Island across the whole range. Oh, and that little hole in the bottom of the phone where you put the cable to charge it, that's going to change shape a little bit too. Apparently people really want this new Lightning C cable. Now, I call it that because the rumours are that on the base models at least, it's going to keep the same 480 megabits per second of transfer speed as Lightning, uh, which is the same as USB 2.0, just in a new shape. Now I didn't believe this to begin with, but when you look at the 10th generation iPad, it gets USB-C and it has USB 2 transfer speeds, exactly the same as Lightning. Is it going to matter to most people that buy this? No, but if Apple does do it, it's still a bit of a crappy move. Now the iPhone 15 will be powered by the A16, which was in last year's iPhone Pro models. It's a very capable chip, but it is something we've seen already. Now onto the Pro iPhones. We are also getting those ports, but here it's expected to be up to the high speed Thunderbolt uh, transfers. So much faster transfers, possibly as high as 40 gigabits per second. That means that those much bigger video files that the Pro iPhones are able to produce, ProRes Video for example, will finally be able to get off of the phone in a reasonable length of time. Now I'm personally a massive fan of AirDrop, but I guess not everyone's got a Mac and this wired connection could actually be faster than that. Beyond that as well, the colors look to be gray, lighter gray, darker gray, and uh, bluey gray. That color though will be on a redesigned chassis again with with gentle curves to the edges and the edges will be made of titanium. So while it's not the easiest metal to work with, it's also super light and strong. So this year's iPhone 15 Pro will be a little bit lighter than last year probably actually noticeably. Now it's been reported that the displays will uh, expand slightly, shrinking the bezels to get a little bit more display into the same size chassis. It will also potentially get a higher starting storage size and a higher price. Now that last one's not as much fun, but all the signs do seem to be pointing that way with an extra $100 on the iPhone Pro's price and an extra $200 on the bigger one. And I say bigger one rather than Pro Max because there's a decent chance that given this price increase and the addition of periscope zoom on the larger models that it might be renamed to the iPhone 15 Ultra rather than the 15 Pro Max. That would make it a lot easier for Apple to do justify that higher price but let's be honest we all know what's really going on here. Now the brain of the iPhone 15 and potentially the Ultra this year will be the A17 which should be a huge upgrade over last year because of its move to the new 3 nanometer process from 5 nanometers last year. That will help with both performance and efficiency gains. We've heard reports about braided color matched cables too for the iPhones. Look over here. Um, somehow though, Mac rumors seem to think that they'll be in the box. Now it might be true, but this image doesn't suggest that. You think Apple just throws these things in the cheapest like dollar store retail packaging ever before they get beautifully wound up to go into the iPhone box? No, me neither. So I'm not sure how this image is supposed to be evidence. Now I'm not saying that they won't get nice cables, but this, this proves nothing. The colors do seem to be the rumored colors though, but are these colors rumored because of the cables? I'm not sure anymore. And we need those new cables because of the whole Lightning C switch over, which is fine, but not only did the iPhones need a new hole in them, so do AirPods. And it looks like the AirPods Pro at least, which have only been around for about a year, are probably getting a new case style with a new hole inside it. Now, of course you can still wirelessly charge them, even if you're poor and keep the old case. And it's not like your old cables are gonna just disappear right away either. So I'm not really sure why this is such a rush. Probably should get a new case for the AirPods third generation as well though, and also an update to the AirPods Max, 
with USB-C, but uh, neither look like they're gonna be here that soon. Although I still maintain that AirPods Max are the ones that are due to be updated this year. It's been three years now. Next up at the event will almost certainly be the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Both are expected to get one key upgrade, which is the chip inside. Now, Apple Watch has used essentially the same chip, uh, the same processor since Series 6, just with a different number scribbled on there at the factory. The new chips will be much more modern and move from 7 nanometer down to 5 nanometer, according to reports, uh, offering more performance and better efficiency. And if you are thinking to yourself, but my watch is fast enough, remember these are going to be around for a few years to come. So there is a decent chance that more challenging features might be coming down the line. And better efficiency will happily take that in something that has a pretty small battery. Uh, and sits on your wrist. Other than the chip and potentially some new colors though, yes, we've been talking about a space black for the Ultra, uh, there's very little to get excited about here. Now it seems like 2024 is definitely gonna be when we get more of our big watch changes with Watch 10. What else? The usual iPhone cases, which apparently might not get a leather option this year, but a new premium non-animal based material. Uh, this one's a little bit vague, but it's a case uh, as good as Apple's ones are, they're probably not worth spending 50 to 100 bucks on anyway not to me at least. There could also be an iPad mini or an iPad nothing or an iPad Air possibly. Not much to go on here either but they'd likely just be chip bumps anyway. If the iPad 11th generation does come though hopefully Apple can force the price down a little bit and lay the home button on the still sold iPad 9th generation to rest. It served as well but its day is done. And if that 11 does come is there any way we can just put the charging coils back into the side and use Apple Pencil 2 because then we can get rid of the old lightning port, one of those as well. Oh, and of course, we are expecting an M3 Mac event too, but that's gonna be like way out in October. So we've got plenty of time to speculate on that first. But what do you think about the range at this event? Is there something you are expecting that I've not mentioned? Let me know down in the comments with hashtag iCaveAnswers and now your questions. Evan Rogers asks, iCaveAnswers, happy belated iCaveversary. Do you think that Apple will add AV1 and other video encoders to M3? And will Apple make uh, Mac Pro add-in cards again? This one's a tricky one because AV3 encoders really are gonna be much more useful for very professional workflows. Apple isn't necessarily going to need those on the base M3s. It could come on the Macs and the Ultra chips, or it could add in card that does go into those Mac Pros. So you've kind of asked two questions that are very nicely aligned there. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm not sure because Apple has kind of gone all in on this HEVC and obviously on uh, their own ProRes. So I feel like they're going to probably focus on those codecs a little bit more than anything else, at least for the foreseeable future. Carl Lake 1506 asks, IK okay, answers follow on to the desktop question, and this is because we were talking about like Apple's version of DeX that may or may not exist. I didn't mean that Apple would do it, but I meant that third party apps could be used via sideloading to achieve a full desktop setup. Apple couldn't stop it. When it works, they could Sherlock the idea like Sidecar. They could do it potentially, but Apple would kind of be able to stop it. It's a very weird situation because if you sideload an app, it doesn't really matter whether it's um, a sideloaded app or one of Apple's own apps, it should still be sandboxed within the system, which means that you can't sort of sideload a desktop environment and then open your other apps and it, uh, the app itself would have to contain all of the other stuff that you would want to use within it. So it would kind of not be your iPhone anymore. It would kind of be like an extra operating system that would have its own kind of siloed storage and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure that they could do that, but I also wonder how many people actually use DeX. Like out of all the people with Samsung phones, what percentage actually have ever used DeX, let alone use it regularly? I would say it's probably in the sort of 5% that's ever tried it and maybe 1% that actually uses it. So maybe it's just not something that Apple needs to focus on because I think even if you could sideload it, uh, I don't think many people would. And just a passerby, 6063 asks, I gave answers, so there is no sign of an official touchscreen Mac. What are your thoughts on using the A-Logic Clarity Pro touch monitor with a Mac mini to achieve similar results? Also, it's getting time to replace my 2016 MacBook Pro 15 inch. What would be a good upgrade? M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch, the new 15 inch MacBook Air, uh, currently used for video audio of not too intense a nature. Okay, first and foremost on the, um, on the touchscreen Mac thing. I have a little touchscreen here which was sent to me to do some testing with um, which is the one that is kind of the second display for Project 91 over here. Touch interface on a Mac just doesn't work. Just doesn't. Uh, that thing 
seems to feel like it's more of a trackpad than an actual direct touch thing and I'm not sure if that's because of the display itself or if it's because of macOS and the way that it interprets touch, but it ain't a good thing. It's not something that you would want to do. So this A-Logic Clarity Pro touch monitor, see if someone can use it with macOS and see if it works, but I have a really sneaky suspicion that it's not going to work in a good way. What you can do if you wanna try out macOS on a touch surface is use Sidecar with your, um, with your iPad and then just give it a go. But you will find that the touch targets are typically too small uh, because it's not designed to be poked and touched. Just, I, I don't think touch on a Mac is a great experience. Now in terms of replacing your MacBook, now the fact that you had a 2016 means that whatever you get with Apple Silicon, even if it's a 13 inch MacBook Air, the base model, it's gonna absolutely wipe the floor with it. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. I would say if you are used to a 15 inch form factor and you're not doing anything that's too, too demanding, I would say the 15 inch MacBook Air is probably a really good choice because it kind of bridges the gap. It's so much cheaper than the 14 inch even MacBook Pros. Uh, I think it's gonna do everything that you need it to do um, for a lot less money than going up to the pros. That would be my guess, but if you guys have got better recommendations, hashtag I gave answers down in the comment section and let him know. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the lovely Patreons over here. And if you've got a question for a future video, hashtag I gave answers. Love you. See you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.